the last thing to uh, be discussed is something called static imports and um, this is rather controversial because um, uh, it can uh, lead to code which is extremely difficult to understand and uh, it's recently added in version 5 so this is what it's all about um, uh, there are two forms of static import and uh, you write it like this import static followed by a fully qualified class name and a static member which is either a variable or a method name and uh, or you can do this, which is uh, import static, fully qualified name, dot star, which imports, which is uh, import on demand, I suppose. Um, uh, all the static member names, variables or methods. And what it does is it, it allows you to refer to um, static members without having to put the class name in front. That's all it does. And... Uh, and um, in the first case, of course, it imports a specific static member, and in the second case, it uh, is import on demand. So here's an example. Uh, if you write import static Java lang math pi, uh, so this is a, a vari static variable called pi, static constant, I should say, called pi in uh, in math, and um, it enables you to write things like uh, this, where you use pi here. Well, without having to uh, stick math dot in front of it. Right, well, uh, that doesn't really gain very much, but uh, that's what it's used for. Now, the reason it's quite controversial is because if you start using this a lot, um, uh, you can end up with uh, variables which are almost impossible to track down where they came from, and it's not uh, generally a good idea. So, this should be used at with extreme caution and uh, uh, next I'll show you one place where it might be a good idea to use it so um, where might it be acceptable to use a static import um, well I suppose if you've got um, if you've got um, a lot of global static constants or methods and um, if it's obvious what those constants or methods are and um, if they're used quite frequently and um, if it's obvious whereabouts they can be found and whereabouts they're defined that is um, then um, it might be acceptable I suppose um, and um, it's important of course that it be obvious not just to the programmer who's writing the code and goes without saying it should be obvious to the any programmer who comes afterwards to try and debug the code that's much more important uh, then it might be alright to use static import and here's a, an example of a um, import on demand for a static import um, and all it's doing is um, allowing you to use um, these names here rather than having to put the class name in front uh, that's assuming you do uh, an ordinary import statement of course otherwise you've got to use the fully qualified name right um, here's another example which uh, maybe a bit better that's a bit better candidate I suppose if you've got um, some numerical package somewhere or in a class and it's um, doing a lot of numerical stuff using sine, cos, tan and all the other numerical functions that are in the math package then it might be acceptable to use a static import there because um, if you're a mathematician you're going to know what they mean so there won't be any problem with that and um, if you're writing Java software, you know, know whereabouts they're located too. So uh, that's possibly a good candidate, but not really anything else. Um, I generally, of course, you have to re-emphasize this. Um, if you're using fully qualified names everywhere instead of import statements, then the bytecode of the resulting output class is just identical. As far as I can see, it doesn't make any difference whether that's static import or an ordinary import. So import, in general, only saves on typing. It doesn't, um, it doesn't affect the uh, resulting bytecode in the output class.